What's up guys? This is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. I'm about to get ready to go to the UC Berkeley men's volleyball club team practice. I was invited by their head coach, Brant Ng, who you might recognize from some of my volleyball videos, to run some drills and play against his guys. But before I go, I need to marinate this salmon with this yummy Yoshida sauce so that it can sit in the sauce for a couple hours and by the time I get home, it'll be ready and flavorful to cook. This is what it looks like when it's marinating. So all I'm gonna do, put it in the fridge for a couple of hours. Let it soak in those glorious sauces, or sauce really, it's only one sauce. And it'll be tasty and ready for me after volleyball. So I was about to drive to Berkeley to go to the practice and I just happened to look into my glove compartment for something and let me show you, this day cannot get any better. It just keeps getting better. Look what I found. I must have put this here a while ago. And now I got my pre-game snack. I love blow pops. I love it when little things like this surprise you and just make your day a little bit better. All the guys on the team can pass pretty well, so I wanted to introduce some ball control drills to challenge their ability to focus by managing two balls, improving their passing rhythm and hand quickness. I call this drill chest pass. Right when one person passes, the other person has to chest pass the ball to the person who just passed and then keep alternating that pattern to keep the ball alive. The next ball control drill builds coordination with footwork. I call this drill soccer or football if you live outside of the USA. It's a similar concept as the chest pass drill except you are kicking the ball to your partner. The last ball control drill is three person pepper. It starts with two people on one side. The side with two people initiates the drill by tossing to the single person to down ball at the side with two people. The person who does not pass it releases to the other side to get ready to dig. This drill helps improve communication and thinking one step ahead. This next drill is to improve a team's out-of-system attack. The best place to aim with an out-of-system set is high, hard, deep corner. It's the longest distance so you have more room for error and you have to swing high in order to aim at that spot, which means there is a lower chance of getting stuff blocked. The libero receives a ball on the 20-foot line closer to the left sideline to set the right side. The setter receives a ball on the 20 foot line closer to the right side line to set the outside hitter. The next drill is a competitive team drill called position battles. It's a short game to 5 points and only designated positions can score. If non-designated positions get a kill, they do not get a point since only the designated positions can score a point. Instead, they get a free ball so they can set the designated position. 
This drill forces each position to be creative with their scoring ability because everyone knows who is going to be set. This also improves your conditioning because you have to spike multiple times in a row and the drill does not stop until someone wins 5 points. For the last 45 minutes, we did some wash drills, also known as continuous play, with regular sixes.
Alright guys, just came back from the Cal practice and it was really fun. I uh, really appreciate the guys for uh, taking my feedback and uh, participating in the drills that I was showing them. The guys are really talented and they're all real cool, real chill, and they're just a fun group of guys to play with. And um, I'm really blessed that Brand has asked me to go and play against them because like I said before, it's very good quality ball, so I get my reps in and I get pushed. And um, yeah, it's just a fun group of guys to play with. So special thanks to the UC Berkeley men's volleyball club team for letting me show them a few drills and play with them. Now I gotta wash the rice and cook it because Asians cannot live without rice. Just finished seasoning it with this garlic salt and now about to put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Yeah. This is the final product. This is what the salmon looks like outside of the oven. A little bit of a glaze from the Yoshida sauce. And now we've served it on a plate. Thank you for watching this episode of Yan Can Cook. Salmon, rice, baby bok choy. You're not a yan, you're a hui. A hui can cook. He's gonna sue you. <laughs> so until next time, Stay tuned for the next cooking episode.